Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Let's Talk Possibility. We're talking tonight to Chris Dykes about the possibilities that open when you give the gift of a book. Good evening and welcome everyone to Let's Talk Possibility. Today we have in the studio Chris Dykes of Infinity Learning and he's, we're going to be talking tonight about books, everything that's possible by having access, really, I think we come down to having access to books. Um, I'm Talana Simpson and I'm in the studio here, as I said, with Chris and our producer Tim and all the way in Cape Town is my co-host Jack. Hey Jack. Hi guys. Hi guys, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me all the way from Cape Town. Yeah, so how is Cape Town? Cape Town is beautiful. It's uh, sunny sky. Well, not right now, obviously, but sunny skies today. Wind picked up a little tonight, but apparently tomorrow's going to be even better. So it's beautiful, yeah. Cool, yeah. Tomorrow is actually, for, for people that don't know, is a, um, the Women's Day. It's our, our holiday public holiday and hence Jack took off, had a bit of a holiday down in the Cape. <laughs> we're, we're here oh, okay. in Johannesburg and yeah, so I, I believe you ended up somewhere in like Stellenbosch. Yeah, the plan was actually to go visit Strontfeld, the uh, winery that we actually had on the show um, a few shows ago. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it, so we made a bit of a road trip. Uh, went to Stellenbosch, saw a few wine farms, I went to a place um, somewhere in the mountains, ended up today in Hermanus, and we saw some whales, wow. which was stunning, stunning um, to see these massive whales uh, just floating sure. around in the ocean. Um, so it's been a good weekend, it's been a good weekend in, in the Cape, but I'll be back in Joburg on Wednesday. Awesome. Be good to have you back. So yeah, tonight we are talking about books. We've already started having our discussion and Chris got us wondering what is understanding and <laughs> how do you define it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chris, I met him years ago. I think I'm family, friends, family, cousins, friends. living, That's I don't know, it. is that one of those those long, wind, yeah, I don't know how we, we got it's to know. Very, it. very convoluted. <laughs> but it's been awesome to, to know you over the years and get to know so much about, about the work you do because you... You run a company called Infinity Learning, and you do a lot of enterprise development. And specifically, or in the, more recently, you've um, started a project called Bookshelf Project, which is um, Correct, yeah. really what we're very interested in, in talking to you some more about tonight. Hence, why we, um, yeah, we got you in so we can talk about books. Um, why this also I think close to my heart is, is last year in May I went to a lecture at WITS where Dr. Lily Pretorius of UNISA did a whole lot of research around reading and she was talking about the means, well reading is the means to a transformed mind and a changed brain and I found it fascinating how she was saying that, that reading is actually not a skill that we pre, predisposed to, it's not something that comes naturally. It's actually only something we've had for about the last 4,000 years. And our brain is not genetically wired, if you, if you want to call it that. We're not biologically meant to read. We actually have to do, it's a skill we have to develop. And the earlier on in our brain's development that we develop the skill, the, the more the neurons, you know, create yeah. the wiring that's I needed the, for the it. The synapses. I mean, the, uh, mm. Tony Buzan, who's the, the, the father, if you like, of mind, uh, of mind maps, um, he's of the firm belief that as we get older and we use our, as we use our brain more, the brain develops, yes. and the billions of synapses um, just just get greater. So it's a, a phenomenal it's a phenomenal so it, concept. So it is amazing. But, but what her research specifically found was that the earlier children start to develop the ability to read, and then also the numeracy skills, the easier it is for them to pick up. Further, further learning and, and understanding. I mean, a whole education system is based on your ability to read language, sure. to read and, and write. So it, it's just very, very interesting. And then how she also saying that they, she in her studies, um, with grade fours and grade seven, seventy eight percent of the learners did not actually meet the minimum standards when it came to to reading. Um, and I know you had some other stats about our literacy rates and that that you were going to share. 
I know I found something on UNESCO from 2009, which said in South Africa, um, our adult literacy rate is, is only 61.9%. And in our youth, that's from 15 to 24, it's 71.2. So um, you had something? Yeah, for me, one of the more the consequence of education that I find terrifying um, is actually an article written in the Cape Times, 1st of Feb, earlier this year, where, where they report, according to the South African Institute of Race Relations, that the unemployment rate of all 15 to 24, 24 year olds is 51% more than um, the national average. And if we look at some of the reasons, literacy would certainly be, be one of those um, contributors. So great. I also found some um, stats around actual books. We were wondering like, how many schools actually have books, never mind you know, the right kind of books <laughs> or enough mm. books. And um, again, on the, the read.org.za website, in a study that they did between 2003 and 2006, they said that 23% of, of the, the pupils had access to newspapers and magazines. Um, only 53% had fewer than 10 books. And 50, 50, another 53% of the learners' families did not even have any books in their home. Yeah. Well, so we're growing up in a country where the, a lot of people don't, have books, and it's something that I've always taken for granted. I've been surrounded by bookshelves and encyclopedias. I mean, when I had a question, I just went and found the encyclopedia and, and read about it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jack, did you want to did you want to uh, interject with anything? Well, I just wanted to I just wanted to ask the uh, we talk about literacy and, and, and books, um, and not that I wanted. Is that something that? Isn't that something we should focus more in our country, the actual literacy side of things? What, what do you, do we focus on it enough or not? Look, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we need to focus on it a whole lot more. Uh, one of these, one of the, one of the, 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 well, certainly the vision that we set up when we created the Bookshelf Project was to, to try and facilitate a love of reading so that people are spending more time reading because they want to read. Um, not because they've been told to read a textbook. And, and the reason we, yeah. we, 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 we had that vision, and the, and the reason that we're trying to drive this literacy, literacy project is for, exact, for the exact reason that you, that you just raised now, that without literacy, we're, we're seriously underperforming. Yeah. Usually. So, so tell us about the bookshelf project you, you, that you just mentioned. What, what is it? Um, well, a couple of years ago, we were doing some uh, work with one of the rotary groups out in an in a, in a informal settlement called uh, Itzotzing, which is just next to the Lion Park. For those of you who live around Johannesburg, um, Itzotzing, just to kind of put a little bit of uh, into context, is, is not a, a township. It's, a, it's an area where people have literally settled. Um, and the rotary people had set up a container, which... Um, had set up a container which was being used as a, um, um, a place of safety for, for the kids. Uh, nothing more than an open piece of ground, a uh, bit of dirt track, um, mm. and, and there was literally nothing else. And at the, uh, in this Just container, shelter, really. it was a shelter. And in the afternoons, okay. the kids would come and play. In the, on the weekends, the, place, the kids would come and play. It's a place of safety, really. And in the container was just a pile of old newspapers. Talana, as you, as you mentioned, a couple of coloring in books, some, some old broken crayons that were getting trodden into the floor, and literally nothing else. Um, and so we left there feeling pretty, pretty down. Mm. Um, and, and that night, I woke up at about sort of three in the morning, four in the morning, and said to, said to my girlfriend, I'm going to build these guys a bookshelf. Uh, and then woke her up about 45 minutes later and said, well, I'm going to, find some books as well. <laughs> what, what, what's his bookshop without books? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. A couple of uh, old newspapers and a couple of crayons and, and one or two coloring in books not really gonna, doesn't really contribute much. And that was the birth of, of this project. And we're starting to really get it, pick up some speed now and mm. get some real growth, which is enormously exciting. So how do you actually find the books now? Because I know you, well, do you know, you know, quite a few, you've got quite a few centers now. Yeah, as you yeah. call them. Um, well, we're, we're in about eight centers at the moment. Uh, not all of them we've built the bookshelf for. Some of them had their bookshelves there already. 
And in the beginning, it was literally friends and family. I would phone everybody and said, right, guys, I want all your children's books and you better bring them to me. And, and, and people responded to the vision and people recognized that they're sitting with uh, many, many books in their homes that were not being used. As I've just said. Yeah. Right. This is it. And, and we tend to hoard. Uh, we tend to squirrel things away. And people were very generous. Uh, and... and one of the one of the, my friends introduced us to Crawford Preparatory School in 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 Santon, and they've become our, our primary benefactor. Um, so every couple of months, I go and visit the librarian there, a lady called Marina, and and she'll have stockpiled a couple of books through the months that have either been replaced because they've been read a couple of times, or they've been damaged in some way, or or whatever the case may be, and and that uh, really is the foundation to to our to our growth. Um, but secondhand bookstores um, there oh, have also been a been a huge help. Mm. Um, you know, where people people are are being given books that they can't sell. They then instead of trashing them or or, or sort of um, having them having them put into pulp, they then put them aside and 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 give me a call every couple of months and say, right, we've got a couple of books, come and pick them up. And so that was the start, and that was the start. And certainly, there's a lot more. There are many more ideas going forward. But at least, at least we've now got the foundation going, which is which is great. Sorry, can I just ask a quick question? Yeah. Um, with this, you are donating the books and stuff, which is great, so that I actually have something to read. Yeah. But is there also um, teaching of, of how to read using these books? Is there a process <laughs> like that going on? Um, actually, Tim, it's it's a it's a, it's a great question, and and really, it's central to to what we're what we're trying to achieve, and and ultimately the vision of the project. Um, one of the things that is integral to, to the, the whole success of this project mm -hmm. is that we want to involve the communities that we are donating the books to. Mm. Um, and, and there's a lot of different elements of the involvement. And I think the crux of everything, though, is uh, getting the children themselves involved. So um, perhaps if I could tell you a quick story, um, this, this uh, bookshelf at Itzotzingwe, which, which we set up a couple of months after, after the books had been delivered, I popped in to say, how's it to the guys? And I walked into the center and well, into the container. And there was a young girl, probably about 13 or 14 years old. And, and she was reading to 42 young the kids, probably between the me. age of, of three and five or six years old. And these kids were balanced on their knees, sitting crammed into a space the size of some of our bedrooms. Um, and they were mesmerized. And I just was watching for a while, and none of them knew that I was there, and it was an engagement. And when we start looking at things like brain development, uh, Talana, something you mentioned earlier, uh, I once read an article where nurturing becomes the integral part of that development. Mm. And all of a sudden, what you have is a mentor, and you've got somebody who, through Come the act older. of reading, um, is, is, is showing that care, often something that's missing in the, in, in the homes that these children come from. And, yeah, um, and it's getting them off the streets and up, you know, running absolutely. through the shebeens and absolutely. whatever. So it's actually and exposing them to a story. And there's absolutely. just something happens when you're, you're someone's reading your imagination. And Jack, you had a question. I uh, I had a question regarding the books, actually. Um, it was regarding the books, the actual the kind of books that you get, because there's a lot of people that that you get the books from. But how related are these books actually to? <laughs> what the kids are learning right now. Sure. Um, perhaps just to, just to finish up from what Tim was saying, uh, so I think it's an integral part of what we're trying to do going forward. Um, once again, I'll use the Etsutsen case study. After we had implemented the, um, after we had implemented the, 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 the first bookshelf, a lady who was a kindergarten teacher in one of the local schools suddenly turned up and, and she was really excited because now she had something that she could use as a, as a way of giving back into the community. And so a, a, a Saturday school was created as a result of the mm. books that were donated. Um, we've also had a couple of volunteers that we're wanting to involve over the next few months who have a lot of skill and a lot of have ex-librarians who, like who would like to help us develop specific reading programs. Um, that we can then train the community volunteers and, and upskill them in the process of trying to drive literacy. 
So, uh, and yeah. sorry, and I know you also have a specific study technique that you you're helping. So, didn't some of the kids come to you and say, you know, we can, thank you, we've got books now, but we actually don't know how to study. Um, yeah, I mean, really, that's part of the the socioeconomic development programs that we run through mm. through uh, BEE funding. Um, so we offer offer study skills uh, as a as a base program that ultimately has the uh, the premise that if we can help the kids to become more independent and if we can empower them through through the skills that they have then then the kids the, the probability of these kids being successful is 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 much higher uh, i guess in principle it's a bit like learning how to play a sport you know you go to a golf pro to get your swing better uh, or you go to a musical instrument, you go to a teacher to learn how to say play the yeah, piano. Coach, yeah. Um, by helping the kids with the learning skills, we, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully their ability to do well is improved. Jack? Uh, well, Chris, is there something, how did you get to learn these, these study skills? Uh, was it something specifically that you implemented in your life? Um, yeah, the... When I was at school, uh, and, and you know, I, I was brought up by a single mom who who I adore, uh, who sent me to one of the top schools in the country. I was I was really blessed, and as it was, I, I nearly I nearly failed. Uh, at the time, I had acne. I, I used sometimes at, at at times was called a pizza face. Um, mm. I was t I was miserable, depressed, and <laughs> and as it was, I I, I virtually tough, failed my trick. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was able to beg my way into university and entered reasonably well and, and then ended up failing one of the exams. And it was at that point that somebody stepped into my life and actually taught me the fundamentals of, of learning. Um, and I, I now have a master's degree. I won one of the top academic awards, uh, three of it. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of that was due to, 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 to the learning skills that, that I was um, lucky enough to be taught. Uh, I then became a lecturer on a part-time basis. And, and so many of the kids that I used to, to lecture had the same kind of problems that, that I experienced. And, and so we ended up sitting down and, and writing a program based on, 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 my, on the experiences that, that, that I went through um, that then became the base of the, of the, of the programs that we taught. And, and that was the birth of, of the learning program. Well, the, our book for tonight um, just going to, is The Power of One by Bruce Courtenay. I can't say so. <laughs> um, and I, know I read this book. It was actually my brother's set work at school. And then he raved about the book. And then I gave it to my mom. Mom read it, raved about it. And I then read it. And I absolutely loved the story. And the reason we, we've chosen this book tonight to talk about is the one reason is just be, because it is a story. And just the power of a book to just, when you're reading it, for your, your brain to create the pictures in your mind. And how just reading some, some words you know, the symbols, black and white, you know, on, on a piece of paper can create this whole vision mm. and characters and their facial expressions. And, and it's a, it's a, just a wonderful story. And just, I think it's just so awesome that, that you are giving, like, like in that young girl, that 14 year old that was reading to 40, mm. 40 children, yeah. giving them that experience of, of using their imagination to, to come. And that's the, the power of books, despite, you know, the, the education side, but also mm. just that enjoyment of getting lost in, in a story. Perhaps. And, and Jack, I know you, you really have loved the story, The Power of One. Yeah, the story to me is a really inspirational story. And to me, it kind of links to what we're doing and what Chris is busy with as well, uh, where there are people you know, getting out of their comfort zone, taking on massive challenges and going out there to teach people. And give people an opportunity to learn, an opportunity to learn how to, well, one of them, to read. And to me, that's just one of the things I think is really important to our country today, is to, to give people that opportunity. And that's why I kind of thought it would be really relevant to what Chris is doing. Um, so really, I recommend going out and getting this book and reading it. Yeah, yeah, it really, it truly is a phenomenal book. Um, <laughs> you, your copy is a pain. You, you forgot it, unfortunately, but you said it's bound in leather. Yeah, You've yeah. You've got was, a specific <laughs> cover for it. I was given a given a first edition by my girlfriend, who who took the time to to make a leather cover. And uh, so when, when it was when 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 I saw that tonight, this was the book being discussed. <laughs> uh, I was pretty pretty excited. It gave me goosebumps actually. So what really still sort of nice. sticks out 
from that story for you? Well, you know, if we, uh, Jack, maybe just to, when, when you were talking earlier about what, what books we choose, um, w- when, when, we, when we choose books to put into the bookshelves, uh, and obviously we're given, given many, many books, and most of which are not suitable for the kind of, uh, for, the, for the kids that are going to be, going to be using the books, um, we typically look for books that are firstly going to help with, with literacy, give the kids the foundations, mm. and then also stories. You know, we don't want to just be another school library that's packed full of dictionaries and math textbooks and trigonometry and ge- uh, geography, history, <laughs> what have you. We want to try and find the books that the kids are going to pick up and get engrossed in and, and start to, to Which build their imagination. encourages them to read. Absolutely. And the more you read, the more you develop those, those neuron pathways. And Absolutely. And, and hopefully that, that love of reading. Love of reading. Um, so I think that's probably ties in with, with, with what you're asking, uh, Talana, is, is it has to be something that becomes inspiring. Mm. And, and that is a truly inspiring, the power of one. What do you think is, is going to actually be the impact, though, of, of things like Kindle and e-books on, on reading going forward? Well, in, in my world, in the, in the bookshelf world, uh, <laughs> uh, it's kind of irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's like way down the line is is giving, you yeah. know, having Kindles there that absolutely with with access to us. But yeah. it is a very interesting. I, I know there's a lot of of talk around how reading is changing because of, yeah. of things like the Kindle. Yeah. Oh, there's no question. Um, one of uh, a very good friend of mine is an elderly gentleman, and his eyes are failing, and and he was given a Kindle. Uh, for his birthday, because he's now can make he can make a sort of one line per page, <laughs> which enables him <laughs> to, to still at at eighty eight or however old he is to to keep on enjoying uh, enjoying the books. But if, Jack, I'm with you, man. I, I I got a little library at home that I I'm a, I'm a, I like to collect, and I love the smell of books. I love the touch of books. Uh, I like seeing the books. Yes. So that that's a personal pleasure for me. Well, I find it something interesting to just reading up about this, about how technology is starting to be used for um, for books. And um, there's a Yoza publishes M novels. So they're actually small novels that, that are on cell phones, on your okay. mobile phones. Wow. And they've been, been finding the, the impact where, where it's aimed at teens and young adults who are actually reading like these stories. So we're going to put the link in, in the notes later, but it's um, been spread quite a bit on Mixit. Which I find it is interesting. So it's, there is ways to to use technology to still promote mm. reading. The reading's never going to go. I think. I think it's just going to be the information is going to be spread, or we, we're going to have to find other ways to access. And hopefully, the words are spelt right. <laughs> yes. Well, well, in in the M novels, as they call it, it's it's. Should be. Um, you were saying with the Kindle and stuff like that, but what I'm more interested in is, um, aren't you going to be finding, like, I know with the, also the Google Books, is you've now, um, the old example was the Gutenberg uh, project, where they were finding all the texts of things that were now released into the Creative Commons that you could use. Um, and because, you know, books have a cost to them, and there's a certain amount of space you can have. Mm. Now, I know, like, overseas, I know in Indian stuff, they're putting up terminals and stuff with access to Wikipedia, and all those books, because you can have far greater sums of books that way. Um, have you guys looked at anything like that, or are, is that just not we're not ready for that in, in this country as yet? Look, I, I, being a little bit uh, facetious earlier, talking about the the Kindle uh, and what it what it can represent, but there's a lot of a inst- lot of the 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 uh, centres that we're engaging with who who have been given the opportunity of working with computers and are having having labs set up for them, um, firstly with the purpose of, or primarily for the purpose of helping the, the people in the center um, get, get access to some kind of computer literacy. And linked to that computer literacy then gives us the opportunity of, of e-books uh, and that type of thing as an alternative. Um, I guess as, as part of where we're able to make a difference, because there are so many books that are available that are not being used in people's libraries, and because... Yeah. There, there is an issue at the moment with access to computers. A practicality is simply saying, well, we can access those books at, at, a, at zero cost. We can build bookshelves at less than a thousand rand uh, a pop. Um, and, and, and suddenly hundreds of, of children get access to the resource. And, and that perhaps is the, is, is the relevance for us of, of what it means to build a bookshelf. 
Uh, and I think a part of your longer term vision you, you were telling us is is to actually have like a, a day a year where, where volunteers would come with their, sure. their fancy four by fours, whatever, and actually swap books between yeah. the bookshelf projects so that every year That's that correct. community gets a, a fresh yeah. batch of books. Yeah. Yeah, the vision, I mean, things have really, really just started to go a bit crazy, which is really exciting. Um, we, I mean, one individual, a young lady, um, deposited 10,000 rand into our account uh, as part of mm. something that she received herself, which is just an incredible... Um, so generous. It's, it's incredible act of generosity. Um, and um, there's a, a charity in the UK who said to us they want to send us uh, probably somewhere in the vicinity of... 5,000 books, an organization called the Book Cycle. And we're, we're starting to hook up with schools and we want to set up uh, a, a, um, a system where each school does a book collection day once a, once a year. And if we can get 10 schools on board, that means that every single month we then get uh, a, new, a new stock of, of books. The, the vision then would be to say, can we get 10, 10 bookshelves set up almost as a unit and then, as you were saying, Talana, once a year to have a whole bunch of volunteers um, with their four by fours and what have you visit each one of the centres, uh, who then pick up a book, pick up all the books out of that bookshelf and take it to a different centre. To the next one, yes. Yeah, so um, absolutely. So as a cycle, we can guarantee that for every ten bookshelves that we build, uh, there's sort of a, a ten-year supply. And if we really get uh, complex, we can then take each different units and swap the books between the A units. Permutation. <laughs> and so w there's almost an infinite um, opportunity to to ensure that books are are being cycled, and taking in sort of that the that most of the the, the centers that we support have around two three hundred kids, um, and we start looking at how how the churn of those kids um, results over a couple of years, the possibility of working. Five, ten thousand, fifteen thousand, and fifteen thousand kids becomes possible. Um, and when we first started, it was literally the the hundred or two hundred so kids that it's saying we never realized, we never even considered that this could grow to where it is. Yeah, but uh, and where it's going, I and think where it's, it's going, go yeah. Somewhere, and Jack, you had a question. Well, I just wanted to, I wanted to head on to our movie, uh, our, one of our resources for the show tonight. That links mm -hmm. to our. A little bit of a controversial conversation we had before the show as well um, about Ken Robinson, who is saying that schools are killing creativity. And uh, we spoke about rote learning and creative uh, kids being creative. Um, Chris, what is your take on on today's education system in terms of the way kids are learning? I mean, is what Ken is saying that? Uh, the way we're educating our kids today, is it doing them a disservice in terms of taking away their creativity? I, I know very little about the education system itself, um, and I certainly wouldn't be, be an expert on it, but with so many of the kids that we talk to, they they come out with almost zero capacity to, to think. Um, and perhaps I can, maybe using a, quite a sad case study, um, we, we, we actually did one of our, our, our learning programs on voting day a couple, couple months ago. And one of the exercises that we asked the kids on the program to do was to write sort of four or five lines about why it was important to, to vote. Um, and most of these kids around 13, 14, 15 years old, um, put their ideas down and it, we were just shocked. Um, one of the examples that kind of has stuck in my mind is that one of the child one of the children wrote down because b e c o s we won w a n houses h o s e s and that was the extent of what this child was able to write um sure. and you know this child's wow. 14 years old um when we, we we give them conceptual exercises to 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 try and assess where they are and and try and give them the basis the base to to build up around their literacy uh, and around their thinking skills, and it's shocking. It, it, it's it's horrifying, um, which of course is it's exciting in terms of what we're doing because I think there's the opportunity to have that much more of an impact. But in terms of where we stand, um, I often leave the days very miserable and very very upset, um, simply because of of this monumental hurdle that that is a reality. 
So yeah. yeah, to answer your question, I'm not an expert and, and it's really only an opinion, but I think there can be a lot more done. And, and it's like Ken was saying in his movie, okay. it's, it's very much that education is geared, was geared towards um, the industrial revolution. Sure. We needed to educate people on that maths and, and um, numeracy, or maths, yeah, that is maths. Maths and language were the highest subjects that were promoted sure. the, the most. Yeah. Which we're not saying, I mean, I think there are the, the core, you need to be able to, to have you know, add yeah. your numbers and, and talk your language and write it. And, sure. But it is... Yeah, I think so. Just sometimes I wonder if the focus on the way we are teaching. So I, I don't think it's about not teaching. Sure. It's about perhaps we're just not getting to to actually teaching literacy the way the way we need to be right yeah. now. And 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 of course there are many 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 teachers that are completely passionate yeah. and involved and are, are desperately trying to to work with the kids um, and with the resources they have. Absolutely. I know they have like. Absolutely. I mean, there's a, there's a program a up in the Limpopo province, which I've heard about, called Sambandila. And the work that those, children, that those uh, teachers are doing in a, in a local community is just awesome. But I guess a lot of what, a lot of what we try to do is ask the kids, you know, how, what's happening at school. Um, and what the kids describe is that the teachers get up, write, uh, write notes out of a textbook that the kids have already, uh, often with spelling mistakes. And then the kids are then instructed to to write the same notes out of the textbook, well, out of, off the board, board, into their into their notebooks. Um, there's very little discussion about why the work is being done, what the implication of this work is. It's just purely a process. And for me, it's past the time, let's write and absolutely rewrite and um, rewrite. Yeah. And so, so yeah, so I really commend you, Chris, for for the work that you are doing and actually, you know. Going out there with, I know it's a big part of of, of infinity learning is the the yeah. BEE side. So using those funds in this way to sure. to actually teach study techniques and promote reading and just giving those kids that that the opportunity to really just enjoy books. And the, we just want to quickly touch on the resource for the the day. You want to give one quick tip, <laughs> quick tip around um. Exam techniques. Sure. Um, like in, in a minute. Okay, we'll keep it keep it pretty quick. Um, you know, just I, I guess the thing is, we spend so much, so many hours, and so much time of our life preparing for exams, but very few of us are, are would, would call ourselves exam experts. And it really makes a lot of sense to to spend some time thinking about exam strategy and exam exam skills. And and so one of the the, the tip that we can think about today is to say, well, how do you utilize your time? And, and really, uh, it's a very simple and easy to use technique where you look at the, num the, the amount of time available. So, for example, a three hour, a three hour paper gives you 180 minutes. Uh, assuming that there's a 100 mark question, you would say, well, 180 divided by 100 gives you 1.8 minutes per mark. And from there, we can say, well, for example, a 10 mm. mark question, you would need to spend about 18 minutes on and that question. Yeah, not too much more than that. Absolutely. Uh, if, the, if that same uh, exam was worth 100, uh, 100 minutes or, or 90 minutes rather, but still 100 marks, you're now starting to, you, you're going to spend much more time on each, sorry, much less time on each question. Um, so it's important to kind of plan what you're going to write and to think about what you're going to write so that you, you utilize that time as effectively as possible. Yeah. So I think you so get wrapped up in one thing and then all of a sudden Absolutely. you've got half, Absolutely. The, half the marks still to write and only 10 Absolutely. minutes. Or... That's it. So if you, if you spend too little that. time, then you're losing the opportunity to earn the marks. If you're spending too much time, you're taking away from other from questions other. where you could be earning, earning, earning marks as uh, other options. Of course, that's assuming that you have the knowledge and you spent the time learning, learning <laughs> in the first place to answer the questions. And, and you had the books to learn from. <laughs> and you had to the books the to, to even start with. That's it. <laughs> Jack, you had another question? Uh, Chris, I just wanted to ask about your, your website. Yes. Um, a space where people can go. Do you want to tell us a bit about it? Um, the website needs work. We're at the moment just trying to uh, get, uh, get a lot of our other fundamentals in place around the, oh, the work with good. the kids themselves. So um, nonetheless, um, we're, we're, I think it just gives us a bit of a base as term, in terms of 
what we're trying to do with with the children that we work with. Um, we do a lot of work with enterprise development as well, which is working with entrepreneurs, helping them with with business skills. Um, and then around that is doing... So you want to mention what the web address is for the site? Web address, <laughs> www.infinitylearning.co.za. Um, if you want to read a bit more about the bookshelf project and uh, the projects tab. That's great. And the one thing that, that's there on the website is, is a question we wanted to ask you, because um, you, you say there on the website that you have a vision to touch the lives of thousands of kids, to open infinite possibilities for the future learning, for the future through learning. What do you believe, because this is a show all about possibilities, sure. what do you believe are some of those infinite possibilities? Well, you know, we, we've debated this point many times, and we've asked many people what their thoughts are. Um, and we're asking and, you and, now. And, and what, <laughs> for me, the possibility is in the possibility itself. Um, when when I asked some, uh, I was just recently on a program with a with a with a with a bunch of kids, and was asking them what it what is it that you guys are are wanting to be? What are you thinking about? And one of the one of the kids said, "I want to be an astronaut." And I just kind of like thought, "Wow, that's uh, that's incredible." Um, and it may or may not be possible, but that's not the point. The dream is what it's all about. Mm. And, and perhaps uh, a, very, a friend of mine, a guy called Ituma Leng, uh, has, was recently uh, awarded a scholarship um, by the, um, uh, the technology part of the government. And he is doing some research on, on well, I can't really tell you what he's doing because I'm not allowed to, and, and you probably <laughs> wring my neck. But he has the capacity to become uh, another Alan Barnard in terms of the research that he's doing, which is uh, in the medical industry. Uh, this guy is a phenomenon, and, and he comes out of a background very much like so many of the kids that we work with. And when we look at what his possibility is, it is mind-blowing. It is phenomenal. And that, for me, is what the excitement is about. So many kids, so many people, so many opportunities. There is an infinite number of these possibilities. possibilities. Absolutely. Cool. And one of the possibilities, um, just to, to wrap up for tonight, because I think that's, that's a wonderful note, vision just to stop on, is um, our sister show, the Let's Talk Afrikaans, asked us to please remind everyone that um, so this Saturday, the 13th of August, August is actually Buy an Afrikaans Book Day. So, let's go buy an Afrikaans book on Saturday. All right. And mm -hmm. yeah, we can actually donate them because I'm, I'm sure that there's, there's room Absolutely. for that. No so, if anyone does want to, actually, that's a brilliant. If anyone does want to donate, um, how can they get hold of you then to, to make those donations? Contact details are on the website, which is, uh, which is the infinitylearning.co.za. Yeah. Um, we're looking for any kind of books anybody's got. A lot of the books aren't suitable for, for kids. But in that instance, we'll then take those books and give them to a cerebral palsy center, for example, or to... Or sometimes you sell them as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. There, there's uh, been some fact, collector um, items that have been donated. <laughs> yeah, it's a great story. <laughs> um, we, we were given a book, uh, a bunch of books, like Sunbirds of Namibia and Aloes of Itosha. <laughs> and I looked at these things and went, well, <laughs> what the hell are we supposed to do with these damn things? <laughs> and as it was, uh, we gave them to a secondhand bookstore who um, the guy was so excited he needed to fill up his chair. They were collector's items. And those, the, the, those three books that we were given were enough to finance the wood for an entire bookshelf. Which um, is awesome. Well, so, so yeah, any books you've got, we, we can find a home for them. Yep, and otherwise, also, if you always get in touch with um, either Jack or myself, and um, our Twitter handle is LT Possibility. I have to remember that. Or, or they can send an email at anything at uh, Let's Talk Network TV. So they can yeah, they pop us info a, at uh, Let's Talk Network TV or anything they want. Or tweet to. us or Facebook us and um, get in touch and. Um, Okay. You've got, yeah. yeah. Just maybe just to to finish up because I think we probably I can hear we get ending up. Yes. Maybe just one story to to finish up. Yes, sure. Obviously, we love stories. I do. Because this is what we do, right? Books and stories they kind of go hand <laughs> in hand. They do. Um, Tell us a story. <laughs> the very first bookshelf we ever 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 built. Um, there was a young lady called Angel, who who became the custodian of this bookshelf, 
And during the first, the first weekend that we were there offloading the books, towards the end of the day, she came up to me and she was hugging a book, literally. And she kind of got me on her own and just said, thank you so much. Uh, my parents are very poor and I've never owned a book, ever. And this is a child, a wow. uh, young adult, probably 17 at the time. Um, to think that somebody of that age who had never owned a book, this, this opportunity represented a life-changing um, moment, a, a life-changing opportunity for her. So really, the books that we, that we get, um, they go to good homes. They do. And so, yeah, thank you again, Chris, for all your work you're doing in, in getting the books to, to the children that are needing it Welcome. and, and inspiring them to read and helping them actually develop those skills and the, the study techniques that are, More that than are, are needed. Um, yeah, I think they just, we've really just, I'm sure we touched the iceberg on everything that's related to books, but I think just, um, for me, it was a very heartwarming story. And well, just that, that, yeah, the, few, the amazing, yeah, I can't say anymore. <laughs> All the kids that you are touching, you know, their lives. It's just, thank you. Well, a wonderful opportunity to be here. So thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Jack, anything you want to say? I just want to thank Chris. Um, yeah, thank you for being on the show. Uh, to me, it's a really inspiring subject as well. And one we can continue for hours and hours, especially with some of the questions we had before the show. Um, just a quick note, um, you know, why, why it's recently so inspiring for me. I met a person the other day who asked me to help him. And this man is 66 years old who is now learning to read and write. And um, it, just, it just showed me the importance of having to give our kids the opportunity to, to be able to read and write and give them the opportunity to be educated uh, because their futures depend on it and our country's future depend on it. So, mm. um, yeah, really inspiring. And, and uh, we'll definitely have a lot more conversation. Yeah. Awesome. And I think the whole thing is just also just reminded me to be grateful that I have this ability to read and Absolutely. write. And it's... It's something that's just, it's just such part of my life and I just do it all the, you know, it's always reading. But I think just being aware of this just puts it in perspective. There are so many people that actually can't do the basics that, that it's just so basic for us. So yeah, um, it's been awesome. Our next show is on Monday, the 27th of August. Um, half past seven again. And yeah, tomorrow night is Let's Talk Sports. No? Public holiday. Tomorrow. Oh, it's a public holiday. Ah, so then Wednesday is Let's <laughs> Talk Geek. Geek. Yeah, yeah they, they're back. Right. Tomorrow is Women's Day. So happy Women's Day for and everyone happy out Women's there. Happy Women's Day to you, Tilana, <laughs> as our yeah, token, our token woman here this evening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's us from the Let's Talk Possibility Show. We will see you on the flip side. I think. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Very Thanks, much. everyone. Thanks, yeah, guys. Thank you so much, guys. Good night. Thank you. Ciao. Oh, <laughs> oh,